the New Testament, there's a terrible storm. Jesus and his disciples have just fed a lot of people. They're heading out onto another side of their journey and a terrible, terrible, terrible storm arises to the point where they're in desperate danger in their own view of even dying. The disciples woke Jesus up and he stood up in the midst of that storm and he just said, peace, be still. And the storm ceased. The the wind stopped immediately. The waves stopped. It was a supernatural event showing that he had control over even nature. Everything moves by the word of his mouth, as the scripture says. And there are a lot of theories about the storm. I was sitting there thinking about it this evening and wondering, you know, we, we only have, uh, we have only, in the New Testament, we, we've divided it into verses and chapters. But in the original writing, it's just one long story. And there, there are no chapter differences in the original text. And if you were to take chapter 4 and chapter 5, I, I think in measure, the storm may have happened because of chapter 5. He, he was, Jesus was on the way to somebody who really needed him. And it's as if all hell rose up to stop this encounter. And some of you are here tonight and you could say, Pastor, you've just, you've just preached my day. Like all hell has come against me today trying to stop me from getting here. And while I'm here, it's as if there's this, this storm of wind is in my mind. This, this power of, of evil trying to get me to get up out of my seat and run out of this place and to leave this place. And I don't know what has caused me to even stay here and to sit here. Nobody could counsel him. There, There was an inner uncleanness and anger and disappointment, disillusionment with life, a hatred of being alive. And no matter who tried to counsel him, whether it's mother, father, friend, brother, professional counselor, Nobody could help him. It says in verse 4, he'd been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Perhaps there'd, there'd been times when he was given pills, and they worked for a moment, but one prison cell, more than one psychiatrist's couch, more than one violent encounter, more than one drunken table trying to pour his problems out to somebody else who might be able to listen. And no matter what anybody said, it... it And even at times it may have offered a bit of hope, but it didn't last. It it, it may have not gotten him to the end of the block or the end of the week or the end of the month. And every good resolution, every, every new idea, everything just seemed to fail. And it says in the scriptures, always day and night he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. And in a, in a graveyard, all you find in that graveyard are of course, stones. There's a lot of stones in the graveyard, but it, it's, it's all just memories, dreams, hopes, things that are gone, promises that can't be fulfilled. It, it's, it's one tombstone may have had the name of, of what's supposed to have been his father who abandoned him, and, and maybe there was just no way of ever reconnecting with that relationship. Another one over here might have just had some dreams and aspirations and things that he had hoped at some point in his life he could have ever happened, but now that was dead and gone too as well. Another one might have had incidences in the past of abuse where he abused or was the abuser. Violence that was directed against him or he directed against somebody else. And I can see this man going and pulling actual pieces off of these tombstones and cutting himself, hating himself, hating life, hating, hating the very breath of like that was in him. And of course, you've got the devil on his shoulders the whole time saying, listen, why don't you join them? What's the point of living? Is If life is going to be like this, why not just end it all? Why not just get planted in the ground like everybody else? Why bother to live any longer? Now, the comforting fact of this story is that Jesus knew this man was there and was already moving towards him. No matter what you are going through tonight or what you have gone through in life, and, I'm, and, and there are some stories here that are, that are just horrific, I want you to know that Jesus has been constantly moving towards you. You're not here tonight by happenstance. It's not a fault. I don't have much of a future. I, I know I'm a fraud. I know I put on a front. I know I'm not what I appear to be. But please, God, don't add to it. That's the way a lot of people actually feel about God. That God is just one more person with 
some kind of a solution that's not going to last or another bony finger to point in your face and tell you the wrong things that you've done. He said to him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we're many. I'm full of memories and pain. Call disenchanted, disenfranchised, loser, hopeless, tormented, full of pain, addicted, alcoholic, suicidal, up and outer, down and outer. You call me whatever you want. I come by almost any name. And then suddenly, this is an interesting thing, but suddenly, this is... It's finished. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he or she becomes a new person. The old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. And suddenly, and put in your right mind. And this man was so filled with gratitude. He said, Jesus, I want to go where you're going. I want to walk with you. I, I, I don't want to lose you. And he said, no. He said, you go home to your home and your friends and you tell them the great things the Lord has done for you and has had compassion on you. You go home to those who thought there was no hope. You go home to those who felt and told you that your life was never going to amount to anything, you go home and you don't have to do or say anything. You just be who I've made you into and it will astound them. You tell them I had compassion on you. He said, and he went and he told people what God had done and all men did marvel. The cross is the power of God. The cross was the redemption of God. When Jesus died on that cross, the power and the penalty of living in sin, which is a wrong way against the word and the will of God was broken. The power of the devil himself to torment your life was broken. The power of Satan to destroy your future was broken. The power of evil to put its ungodly substance in your body and veins was broken. The power of hell to torment your mind was broken. It was broken. And not only was it broken, but a way was made into life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Salvation is a miracle. Salvation is real. David the king said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus has come to you tonight. He came a long way to get you. Came all the way from heaven, all the way to the earth. He was battered and bruised by every force of hell that could be thrown against him on this side of eternity. And he took it all to the cross for your sake. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And it was his way of telling you that if you place your confidence in me, it's not in vain. I will also raise you from the dead. I will give you new life and life eternal with me in heaven forever. You can have a new life tonight. You have to fight the fear that this is not going to be real or this is not going to work. You have to fight that fear. You have to get up from where you are and move towards God. That's all you can do. And these things in you right now that have kept you bound are screaming for mercy. They are right this very moment. There are some sitting here and there's, there's a war right in your soul right at this moment. Because the enemy knows himself the moment you turn and move towards Jesus Christ, all the power of hell over your life is broken. And you are given a future, a wonderful future in God. The scripture says, if you can hear his voice tonight, don't harden your heart. Don't say, don't say this is not for me. Don't listen to the whisperings of evil that have governed your life. Don't listen to the lies anymore. Jesus looks at you and doesn't call you the same things that the devil does or that you're calling yourself tonight. He calls you precious. He calls you loved. He calls you wonderful. He calls you by a brand new name. He will send you out free. 
free tonight. Free. If you will admit that you're a sinner, it seems that this man didn't have a hard time to do that. If you'll understand that God died on a cross in your place, the Son of God died for you. If you will open your heart and say, Lord, I can't save myself. I am a sinner and I need a Savior. And if you want me, Lord, I'm yours. And he'll look at you and say, oh, I want you. That's why I came to the earth, just to get you. I didn't want to lose you. I came to get you and bring you home. And he says to you, I'll, I'll open your prisons and set you free. I'll give you spiritual sight. I'll let you be able to hear again the words of God. You will have purpose and direction for your life. And when you, when you finish this course of life on this earth, you'll be so glad that this night you made this decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ. If you're here tonight and this evening, you have a sense in your heart that this evening has been for you. And you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm not all of the things you spoke about, but I am some of them. And I know I need a Savior. I can't live this life by myself anymore. It's a mess. It's going nowhere. And even though on the outward people may think it's going somewhere, I know inside it's going nowhere. And tonight I need to give my life to Jesus Christ. I need to become a follower of Jesus Christ. I need the power of sin broken. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And we're going to believe God for a miracle, a miracle for you tonight. A miracle in your life that you're going to leave here a changed person. Let me tell you tonight, those that have come here, listen carefully. Let me tell you what Jesus is going to do for you tonight. He got up into the pulpit in one of the synagogues at the beginning of his ministry on the earth. And here's the words that he spoke. Now, this is the purpose that Jesus came. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. In other words, to bring good news to those who don't have anyone else to help them. That's what he means by that. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to tell the captives they can be free, to give sight back to those who are blind, to set free those who have been wounded and to tell them that they can have this freedom now. He says the acceptable year of the Lord now is the day. You can have the freedom now. You can be free now. And the Bible says he, he closed the book and gave it back to the leader and he said this day everything you've heard is yours. It's fulfilled in your ears. This day, today, you can have this. You can, you can be free. You will be forgiven for the wrong that you've committed against God and against your fellow man. And you'll be given a purpose for your life. It, the purpose is God's purpose. You'll finally understand why you were born. And what your life is really all about. And it will be an incredible journey. Any, any of us who've already undertaken this journey can tell you that. It's an incredible journey. And it never ends. It just keeps getting better every day. I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I've done wrong things in my life. And I'm sorry for these things. I don't want to live this way anymore but I don't have the power to change. That's why I open my heart to you. And I believe that you died for me. You paid the price for all the wrong things that I have done. And you made a way for me to go free from my past and from all the things of this life that torment my mind and take away my hope. You came to give me life. Tonight, Jesus Christ, Son of God, I 
open my heart to you. I invite you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. That means you have the right to me. You have the right to teach me and lead me and help me and guide me and be my Savior, the only one who can forgive me. As I pray these words, I'm starting to feel clean. I feel as if you've accepted my words and you've come into my heart and you're breaking all the chains that have held me captive. From this day forward, Jesus Christ, you are the Lord of my life. I will walk with you. I will speak about you. And you have the right to sweep out all the dirt in my life and make me into the person that you have designed me to be. I give you the right to do that. I invite you to do that. Open every prison door. Heal every hurt place. Help me to see your power and to see your purpose for my life. Don't let me turn back. Don't let my heart grow cold. But let me bring glory to your name. I believe with all my heart that you have accepted me, that you have made me clean and given me a a reason to live. I'm so thankful. Guide me and teach me now. I am your loyal follower for the rest of my life. Thank you for having me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. What you've just done is more real than life and breath. God has received you. You have that, you'll have that witness in you. If you don't feel it right now, you will feel it. Don't turn back. Don't turn back to the graveyard. Don't go back to where you came from. Jesus said to this man, go and tell your family and your friends the good things that God has done for you. You have to, you have to start to learn who you are because of Jesus Christ. You have to get a Bible. You have to start to read it. You, it's all in there. You can't, you can't fly a plane without taking a course. And you can't be a Christian without reading the Word of God. Okay? You, you, you've got to get in this book. If you don't have one, we'll give you one. You have to get a New Testament and start reading about who Jesus is. This is an awesome night. This is a wonderful night. The Bible, listen, the Bible says that the angels of heaven are dancing around the throne of God right now, all because of you. Because of you. Because of you, there's rejoicing at the throne of God.